You know, I am not a beach fanboy by any stretch of the imagination, but I gotta say, I have been looking forward to checking out this Beats Pill XL. This is the supersized version of the smaller regular Pill Bluetooth speaker, and uh, I'm kinda excited to get into the box, so let's just do that. All right, so let's get in here. It looks like it's ready to go right out of the box, you know, and I'm digging the heft here. It's heavy enough to be taken seriously, but it's, um, it's still gonna be portable. I don't know about slipping this in a backpack though. I guess if you're a hardcore backpacker, you wouldn't wanna go with this, but most folks are gonna be able to slip this in a bag and cart it with them wherever they want. I like that Beats is putting these stickers on here to very clearly spell out what the buttons do. I also like knowing where all the controls are. So here we've got power, volume up and down, and a fuel gauge indicator. We can just take that off. We notice that these are uh, right at the surface level, they're sort of flush and uh, it really keeps the finish nice and clean. Here it looks like we've got a little bit of a rubber thing we can pull back. We're going to find a uh, Bluetooth indicator, uh, the charging port. Looks like we can update the firmware, which is interesting. Maybe uh, update the, the Bluetooth profile. That's actually a really slick feature. Hardwire another device that maybe doesn't have Bluetooth in it and then that's where we charge it. We'll pull this back and yeah, sure enough. Really helps to have the sticker there, I think, although everything is labeled here. All right, let's spin this over, but as we do, let's notice a fingerprint magnet. This gloss black stuff is going to get murky. The handle now becomes the, uh, the resting stage, so that's clever. And uh, it sits pretty securely there. That's good enough for me. More with the stickers. Okay, so it looks like if we press once, we play. If we press twice, we advance track. So it's really difficult to see past the speaker screen, but if you look just right, it looks like they've got a couple of maybe three quarter inch tweeters in there, and then it looks like one and a half to two inch drivers. It's hard to say for sure because Beats doesn't talk about the actual size of the drivers, but I do notice that there is a passive radiator in the back, and I'm assuming that's gonna beef up the bass quite a bit. I mean, it is Beats, so let's hope for some good bass. When it powers up, it gives you a little bit of a chime. And then we see the Bluetooth light up. It looks like it's in pairing mode already. And if you want to pair even faster and your phone allows it, this little Beats logo is actually an NFC chip. Just tap to pair. You know, I got so caught up in the speaker, I almost forgot there's an accessories box. Let's uh, see if there's any surprises in here. And uh, yeah, it looks like there is. There's the usual power stuff, um, but they also include a uh, auxiliary cable so that you can hardwire the device. You'd be surprised how many Bluetooth speaker makers just leave this out. We listen to this thing for all of like 45 seconds. So I'm not gonna give you a full breakdown, but here's what I will tell you. This thing can get loud. I am not kidding. This thing gets as loud as any Bluetooth speaker we've ever tested, maybe even uh, louder than uh, the iLoud from IK Multimedia. It also puts out a tremendous amount of bass. Uh, the passive radiator on the back moved a ton of air. As for the overall sound signature, well, you're going to have to come back later and check with Digital Trends to read our full review.